is it so inconsistent? Construction is hard. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for tuning back in. Uh, Brian and Gary here talking about workforce management for construction. Uh, specifically today, we're talking about sustainability. How do we create a sustainable workforce management practice in the way of the tool? We've referenced briefly in the past, uh, people, process, technology, or how we break down these business practices. Today, we're gonna go in depth into that concept of people, process, technology, or PPT. Uh, and then we're gonna get into a little bit of some common pitfalls that most of the industry is dealing with today as far as tools that aren't fit to the task and how to pull it all together and make it sustainable. So with that being said, let's kind of kick off. We're gonna go through three parts today. The first part is really hitting on people process technology and that concept. And I think there's a big piece there that changed the way I looked at a lot of how our business ran, uh, as well as other areas of opportunity around our business when we were growing. Uh, part two, we're gonna talk a little bit more about what's happening today. And this is more the common pitfalls. Uh, we've talked to a lot of groups over the years that are valiantly and adamantly trying to solve this problem. And a lot of times there's just one of the pieces missing. It's not the whole thing is missing. It's not that we're not trying to improve and constantly evolve. It's rather we've been trying again and again and we never put all the pieces together from the very beginning. And there's that one critical one missing that causes us to keep, keep crumbling, keep falling down. And then in part three, we'll talk about a sustainable training program, training people for sustainable workforce management operations. People process technology, right? The three-legged stool is how Gary, you first described it to me. Mm -hmm. um, Harold Levitt, a business philosopher, publishes a paper back in the 1960s. And since then, it's gone through a few different evolutions and different hands and such like that. But now there's a pretty widely accepted system or concept called people process technology. And the, and the idea in, in a nutshell is every business practice is supported with people who should be involved process, what should those people be doing and when? And then finally, technology or the tool. Uh, what is the tool fit to the task? What is the tool that's going to support the people and enable the processes? My family comes from a history of farming. If you're gonna plow a field, it's hard to do it without any kind of a tool. So the tool could be a plow or the tool could be, for instance, as we speak today, an enterprise software program uh, specifically tailored for workforce management and construction, AKA Rivet. Harold Levitt, three-legged stool, Three-legged stool concept is really around one leg is the people, one leg is the process, one leg is the technology. We see typically there will be a lot of strong people in construction trying to manage uh, the workforce. This is where we typically see those superintendents and our most experienced people. We've joked with executives in the past about how the labor, co the labor coordinator position is a rough spot. And they all go through this gauntlet or this rite of passage where somebody has to be the labor coordinator and somebody has to ultimately manage and maneuver the people across the jobs. And there's a reason why this job is so dreaded or so burdensome. We don't typically have a tool fit to the task. So the, pro the, the technology leg is non-existent and the people and the process legs have to take on the weight. And a lot of times, because there's no technology or no way to visualize it, we've talked in the past about consolidating and visu visualizing this workforce management information because that's not there. It's hard to have processes around something you can't see and you can't really quantify or qualify. And so thus, it almost all, almost all the weight falls on the poor people that are trying to manage the workforce across the jobs. And thus we see superintendents and labor coordinators and these different extremely experienced and highly valuable people playing phone and tag and juggling people across jobs. You guys went through an, a whole evolution uh, of different tools and different people doing it at different times. Yes, we did. We had processes in place that weren't working very well. And we had our, our labor managers in a silo. We had our project managers in a silo. And they weren't allowed to cross over into each other's areas of expertise, so to speak. Um, I believe we were making a mistake by not allowing the project managers to participate at a higher level in the labor management processes. We'd have jobs that would run over the labor budget but the material budget was pretty much in line and they were having difficulty trying to determine why these labor budgets were, were seemed to be routinely running over. Uh, we had good estimators. We felt as though we had good estimates. And by looking at the, the material budget falling in line, if you know anything about estimating and how the material's tied to the labor, and in the case that we're mismanaging the labor, 
um, project would would be completed, labor would run over and uh, run over the budget. I get up and make my walk around the office and stop in, talk to the project manager, and ask him how, what he thought the problem was with the labor running over budget. And he would shrug his shoulders and basically say, "Well, I don't have anything to do with labor. I don't have much input." Um, so I really can't answer that question. You'll have to go talk to the labor guys, the, the superintendent. So I would go over, talk to the superintendent, and the superintendent, I would usually get a response like, I don't really know. I tried to stay on top of it the best I could. I thought I got involved probably more than I usually do, and it's probably a good thing I did because we probably saved another 10%. It would have been worse had I not. Um, and. Um, really got nowhere. We I had no answers that I was satisfied with. Go back to my office and um, wait for the next job to complete and walk that circuit and get the same result. It was like Groundhog's Day. No one was being held accountable. Uh, no one really had or was responsible. There was, there was no clear defined reason for this to be happening. And I decided that I was going to blow that process up. And I did. I, uh, I took labor management responsibilities, part of it, away from the superintendents, the labor managers, and I inserted it into the project manager's job description. So now the project managers were helping and in some, time, in some places taking the lead with labor management on these jobs. Now he's accountable. So is the superintendent now, because now they're working together as a team. There's no more, we had a bad estimate and just blame it on that and, and move on from that. Um, we're taking the deep dive in. Problem now is the golden spreadsheet goes away. The, the, the spreadsheet that the uh, superintendent is using to manage labor is kind of non-existent now and I needed a way for our project managers to communicate between each other and with the labor manager because we had a lot of fingers in the pot right now. And I came up with Microsoft Outlook as the database to communicate between between the project management team and the superintendents. That kind of work, but we needed a platform. Um, we operated that way for quite some time, years. If I know. It's worth noting, Gary started trying to attack this workforce management process and, and tool in the late 90s to the 2000s, and it wasn't until 2012, 2014, that the first workforce management platform came for construction. That's, that's right. Uh, I'd say it started at a little bit later than that, but regardless, um, we needed a platform. And I would look about every month, I would look, try to find a platform, couldn't find one. And then finally, I found a company called LaborChart and um, implemented the platform. And now we had a solid foundation to build on. Uh, and that really enhanced our ability to put further processes into place, which turned into uh, a very um, powerful tool for us. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Gary and I first crossed paths at Labor Chart. I was fortunate enough to stumble into that business at a very early stage with the founders and, and help uh, witness that business grow and this category in construction become identified and developed. Gary's one of our first customers and that's where we all found this similar ideology and where workforce management in construction really started to become defined by the contractors we were working alongside. Labor chart was uh, acquired. It is a workforce management tool for construction. It serves construction as a whole. Gary and I are now at Rivet because Rivet is the only workforce management platform tailored for just MEP, specifically primarily electricals right now. And uh, that's where the category is going. We're getting and that's more. a big deal. That's a big deal. You can't, and it's not one size fits all, right? This is tailored to the electrical contractor, which then in turn falls over into some more of the MEP. But uh, really the base is the electrical contractor. That's the concerns. And, and that's where I've seen how concrete contractors and general contractors and painters and you name it, I've seen how all of them try to plan and forecast and manage their workforce. And they are very different. And electrical MEP is very different. And, and because the tools fit to that task, we see groups able to adopt it so much faster than the, than the long, arduous uh, you know, migration used to take in the past. And, and right. it is, it's feasible today and it's there. And we're, that's what we're trying to spread the word on. What's happening today we're talking about, you know, we had these different tools and we still had the same problems. We still do the walk around. You mentioned, and I think it's important to, to point out, I walk around and, and there's, couldn't hold people accountable. And there's an aspect of hold people accountable to what? 
What does that actually mean? And what we're really talking about is having a workflow mapped, having a written document somewhere that says on every single job, this is the, the pre-project meeting we're going to have. These are all the people that are going to be there and they're going to talk about A, B, and C. And one of those items is the labor plan. And that labor plan will look like this and be to this level of detail on every job or on these level of jobs, et cetera. Yeah. It's something to make note. Yeah, so there, there's a project timeline with milestones along the timeline from start to finish and what processes need to be put into place at what point of the job you're in. And, and there's about uh, 10 steps, I believe, 10 milestones along that timeline that are crucial. And, and it contributes to the success of the project. And it's a pretty simple thing to put together, really. I mean, this isn't rocket science, but you have to have discipline. You've got to bring discipline to your company in a way you never have before. And so there has to be, there has to be a dad. I refer to it as dad, the guy who is, who is responsible and, and will be held accountable for the processes being put into place and the ultimate person, the decision maker for the transfer of power, or of power, I'm sorry, uh, the transfer of responsibility of, of well, of manpower um, from job to job. Someone has to make the final decision. Who's going to go where? Right. Right. Don't want to harp too much on, on, you know, what is happening today. There's a lot of good stuff happening today as well. But one of the ways that I think we've seen over the years, a good way to think of it and to self-reflect is looking at our field coordinators, director of, of operations, director of field forces, general superintendents, you know, insert the role or the hat that that individual may wear, whoever is ultimately accountable for moving people for moving people from job A to job B, that is, an, that is an expensive person, that is an experienced person, and when we don't have a tool fit to the task, or we don't have a process in place, that person ends up spending all day just trying to manage a spreadsheet, play phone tag, just keep corralling the cats. And yeah. it's something to make note of, that those people are too valuable for us to be letting their time go to yeah, waste. You know, it, it comes down to having a team. You need a team. To do it properly, I'll equate that to uh, a NASCAR race, where I have the I have the fastest car on the track. I have the best um, driver, who is my general superintendent. I have the best project management team. I have the best estimators. My company is great, as each department stands alone. But when I try to stitch them together as a team, I'm failing. Picture your NASCAR. And your, your general superintendent is the driver. And you get out there, and because you have the best driver, you have the best car. The first 30 laps, you're way out in front. And then you pull into the pits. My team, my project managers, my pit crew, they're not allowed to jump over the wall. But my competitors, they're a, they're a team. They can jump over the wall. So while they're changing tires and putting in fuel, and doing everything they need to do in probably less than seven seconds. I'm not a NASCAR guy, but let's go with seven seconds, right? My driver gets out of the car. He changes out every tire. He fuels up the car because he's, he's the man, right? And we pull back out on the track, and now we're, we're about three laps down. And that keeps going on throughout the whole race, and, and we just get hammered. So that's the concept of the team. That's, that's an analogy I like to use because... Those guys in that other pit are a team, and they're they're pulling together in the same direction. They know the game plan. They they understand what has to get done, um, and not that the other guys don't understand what needs to get done. No, but they're not allowed to participate. They're, they're and, and that's a management issue and a management problem. They are that uh, needs to be resolved. They are shouting words of encouragement. Yeah, they to, are, to the driver. Sure and are. there's a lot of people that we talk to that, that say, well, yeah, no, my people call in. They call and mm -hmm. convey their needs and their asks and, and warnings to the labor managers. And that's great and all, but that's just like somebody on the pit crew standing there going, hey, don't forget the lug nut on the left wheel. Right, they think they're a team. Yeah. And they really aren't. It's still one guy that right. has to go get it all updated, right. get it done, and get it going. Right. How do we bring it all together? How do we train on it? How do we make it sustainable? We're pretty biased here because we've seen – you can try to do these things with spreadsheets. You can try to do these things with job wars. The lights are on. We're not saying it doesn't work, but man, it makes it hard. It makes it hard, it yeah. makes it inefficient, and we, we feel these pains that we'll talk about more in other segments, but it just, it sucks, and it doesn't have to. Right. And so when we talk about bringing it all together, you know, we're talking about really consolidation, we're talking about 
training and having a platform to train on and we're talking about making something sustainable and so when we talk about consolidation there's two key aspects uh, for some of our listeners that maybe are on the data side of things more two critical fundamental pieces of information or data the the foundation uh, uh, of information is people and project records we need to have a place where we are updating and bringing those two together now you don't have to be integrated from the start gary your company started non-integrated for a while very long yeah integrated but huge possibility when we talk more on information uh, in our workforce management pillars series we'll talk more about integrations but this data this consolidation piece whether it is a manual input whether it's an integration from another tool a csv upload whatever it is you have to have a sustainable strategy for how the data is going to continuously get consolidated in this one place and we need our people and we need our project records so that we can see the array across the two and this tool is critical it's not a project it's not a project management tool so we need project records but we don't necessarily we don't necessarily need all the documentation etc we need the key aspects and factors of that job that impact how labor can be maximized on it what are the site criteria and certifications and trainings etc then we need our people and the roster i don't need the roster of uh hr functions necessarily but i need the roster of how i best utilize and leverage that person on the job when i get all that consolidated then we have a recipe for success with a workforce management practice and a workforce management platform yeah, a lot of information under one platform and brought in from other platforms and you got to consolidate the people in it too right and that's what you're talking about is it can't be and we've seen this a lot i can't stress this enough these sound like simple concepts that gary and i talk about and yet we've got 10 stories for why each one doesn't go that way i talk about consolidating people it really isn't acceptable to say these people will use it but we're not going to ask the other teams to use it the pms will use it but we're not going to ask the superintendents to use it oh this guy will use it but this guy has a different way if they touch and they manage and they have to coordinate across the workforce they've got to be in the same place otherwise you're i mean you're trying you're the offensive coordinator for a football team and and you only see half the field at a given moment right and and so what happens with the uh these platforms and rivet gives you a foundation to train on now that seems like kind of a hokey statement but it's so true you try to train when you don't really have solid systems in place to support it you cannot sustain your training how many contractors out there have tried to start training programs and written training manuals and spent a lot of time and effort only to have it fizzle out and die i call it a a sparkler where you light the training sparkler and after six months it's dead you know fun while it lasted it just died where with a sustainable training program You have a foundation you have something to train off of and when conditions change it changes your processes but it changes for everyone so when i ask a contractor do you guys do you do two week look aheads and i'll get an answer like we do on some jobs we do on others some project managers do some other some don't that tells me right away that there's no training program there's not a sustainable training program going on therefore uh, there's no consistency there's no stability in your processes, and you're you're lucky if you can bring a job in under the labor budget at that point. Just that simple statement, you should should be a big warning sign for management that wait a minute, we need to do something different. But you can't do it. I'm a I, I tried developing training programs for years, and they died because I came to the realization after having a platform that this was the magic. This was what actually uh, brought it all together and gave me something to train on and be consistent and sustain it over the long haul. And and to this day, that training program is still in place and it's it's highly successful. And I think it it might even be, you know, one of the the models for how to do it. Uh, It's training, having a platform to train on, what makes it effective, all these things. If we're not training, on what we're actually going to see and use day to day that's where those sparkler scenarios come into play if i'm not actually seeing it and using it day to day when i'm actually going to be expected to to need it there, there's no reason for people to do it we used to say you know with army training there's a whole we talked for days about that but training the army you you have to simulate the conditions to have effective training so if you want to train guys to do uh, good stress shooting you have to first run them through a true gauntlet and get their heart rate out, get them beaten down, and then go see if they can hit the target. Yeah. You can't simulate that or put, you know, you have to actually go train on how it's going to be. And it's the same thing with with uh, workforce management. 
if we are trying to train with a written guide or something like that, but we don't actually have the tool that they're going to be seeing and they're going to have to leverage when the time comes, or we're going to be walking into a sparkler scenario. And it, it's a huge piece of this is being able to also, we hear this a lot, not all PMs are created equal, meaning not every PM is going to be able to grasp and master creating a labor plan. But if we've got trainings and tools in place that help support that, it's more feasible for us to say, okay, all of our PMs now are going to take a first stab at a labor plan and the superintendent and the foreman can come in and mull it over and work on it with them. It's a team. It's a team. It's a team. You're training each other. It's cross training. Mm -hmm. Make it sustainable. It's got to become a good habit too. And I think there's an aspect of when we bring these scenarios or these initiatives, when we bring these initiatives into an organization, we've seen groups do it different ways. And there's one aspect of, hey, this is the tool that we have to use because. And then there's another aspect that a friend of ours up in Canada uh, did one of the best implementations I've ever seen. And he started the entire initiative out with, listen, everyone, we came together and agreed that we spend too much time trying to find out who is where, where they're going next and making it happen. Workforce management was taking too much time. The labor meetings were too long and too many people. So he got everybody to understand the signs of where things were falling through the cracks. And then he went into, we agreed as a company that this is something that we could do better and that we should be open to doing better. And then he came in with, this is how we do it better. Here's a tool that allows us to do these things better and more efficiently. And we've all agreed and we have a team approach to, we're gonna make it happen. We're all bought into this. And starting with that scenario of here's the conditions, here's the problem. We agree as a team to do what it takes to solve it. Huge difference rather than, hey, this is the tool we need you guys to use. What do you think? And I want to hit on that topic here in a second, too, of when leadership puts the burden of it on their individual stakeholders. And what I mean by that, it's not fair to go to a group of superintendents and say, do you think we should do this? Do you think we should change the heart of operations and do this instead? That's not fair to do. That's a lose-lose for them. They know what they've been doing is working. They know they're going to be able to perform to a certain level of efficiency and effectiveness with what they're doing. But you're asking them to accept all the risk and say, okay, I'm going to put my myself on the line that, yeah, I, I think it would be better doing this. No, that's company leaders have to be able to identify these things, tie it all back together, and then that's who ultimately has to make the decision. It's not fair for us to say, what do you, th- you tell me what we should do with the company. You know, and unfortunately it happens a lot and, and, and when we hear the no's I totally understand you know there are times when hey the change is, seems like a lot it's not easy but it's also not fair for us to say yeah it's all on you yeah. you know yeah. review review well you know I, I think that's that's a lot for this session I think and, and uh, uh, I, you know I, the main theme was accountability planning again planning uh, training sustainable processes and it comes right back around to what i always say construction is hard but But it it doesn't doesn't have to be be. yep this in review you know we talked about people process technology as gary mentioned people process technology ppt is really a method of accountability it's a way that i can look at anything going on in my business and say is it the individual that's coming up short is it a process that we haven't established yet or is it a tool that i haven't provided my team yet once I identify that, I can go through the process of creating a sustainable practice. Uh, again, what we're talking about the workforce management specifically is look around. If you've got your most experienced and most valuable people uh, living in spreadsheets and making phone calls all day and just trying to prepare for the next labor meeting and react, like we probably have an opportunity to get some processes in place and open up their time to do more proactive things. If you are having labor meetings that are running long, constantly trying to react to what's going on, there's probably an opportunity here for some processes around workforce management. When you do get a platform in place, it gives us a place to train on. It gives our people something to leverage and go back to and use. It gives us a place to evolve from and actually progress. And when you do that, you're going to consolidate everybody together, create the written training plan, and then hold people accountable to it and uh, approach it as a team, have everybody in one place. So with that, uh, we hope that this was valuable. And we'll be talking here in the upcoming segments about each of the pillars of our six pillars, starting with forecasting and going into depth on this ppt mentality who is doing these typically uh, how are they going about it today what tools or tricks are they trying to leverage and how we may be able to help so thank you again we appreciate it and yeah, we'll talk thank again you, soon. we are here to talk about workforce management why is it so inconsistent construction is hard <laughs>